Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part 9 of my reusable space program. And we're going to do another reloading session here using my airship reloader. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that there is a new device hanging from this. Uh, very specifically, the cockpit is a non-standard item. It is a mod from B9 Aerospace, and it is the... Well, the B9 Aerospace develops a lot of interesting futuristic-looking parts that are basically um, very industrial-looking. And I loved the look of their cockpit, so I thought, I need a space tug that will move hardware to and from the moon, and this is the perfect one for them. So you see me dropping this on top of the rocket, I have the quantum struts enabled in this one, uh, since we saw the previous one was a little floppy. Uh, you can see, of course, we're going to do a full reload cycle this time, and I am going to lock the stage. Alt-L, by the way, lock the stages, so that I don't accidentally hit space and drop all my, um, all my uh, jet engines this time. I'm going to do this properly. I really wanted to show you it properly. So that's us. We've got everything refueled, so time to... Uh, detach the detach the balloon or the airship and we'll fly that off to a safe distance look at that it wants to fly up right away because it's been trying to lift that whole thing off the ground that has been essentially an anchor uh, it turns of course with all the swiftness of uh, an oil tanker I'm gonna fly this more or less back to the space uh, space base or whatever to the space center we're a kilometer away that should make us safe uh, I tried to use the Kerbal attachment system with the anchor, but apparently I messed up. People have, been, people have been saying, oh, use the Kerbal attachment system, while failing to notice that I actually had it attached. However, I failed to actually attach it correctly. Anyway, I've touched down, we're about a kilometer away, and this is the, the spacecraft. Now I'm going to do another vertical uh, hop here. That's why the landing autopilot is up. This one is going to tell us you know, where we're going to come down. We're going to try and again land within the bounds of the space center so we can refuel this whole thing. And getting up to speed. Are we ready? There we go. Again, we don't have enough power to support this whole thing, so we have to use the rocket engine and then cycle the rocket engine. Other than that, we're basically uh, adjusting our, our vertical angle to try and keep ourselves cl as close to the space center as possible. Uh, you get a glimpse there of the interior cockpit, but um, one of the interesting things about this... Well, okay, there's a number of interesting things about this. Uh, it, where I end, actually end up burning some of the interior fuel here, uh, and that was an accident. Uh, so you see me here trying to uh, make sure I don't use up all the fuel in my upper stage, because I do need to get up to orbital velocity. <laughs> um, that was an accident, so yeah... I, trying to move stuff in and then I have to turn off fuel cross flow or something here and yeah kill the engine okay so we have a spacecraft now the only thing is we have not repacked these parachutes and we are basically on a vertical mission and I did this previously and I completely forgot and the thing crashed so I had to go back and redo this so as we are heading upwards in this very short arc we have to get out repack all these chutes as quickly as possible. Subsequently, we have to get back inside our spacecraft and then accelerate up to orbital velocity. And the window for this is very small because we have to get up to orbital velocity before the, the, uh, before the landing stage, before the boost stage ends up falling back into the atmosphere. You know, and uh, that is actually not... Well, that actually doesn't happen unless... <laughs> Unless you end up running out of, um, unless you end up running some of the fuel from the spacecraft. Okay, so heading back in, I get up and get up to the side door and it says grab, but I can't get on. This is a minor problem with a B9 cockpit. Uh, the actual entry point is on the other side. Uh, I think this is a glitch, but I'm prepared to tolerate it. There we go. So that's us. We can now detach this and get ourselves going up to orbital velocity as quickly as possible. And so now it is a race against time. We have to get going. If the spacecraft falls into the atmosphere before I can get back to it, it will be removed. Uh, although we could presume that since the parachutes are deployed that uh, it would survive. But 
let's try and do the whole thing correctly. Um, because of the offset docking node, this thing does wobble a little. It wants to kind of torque downwards because the docking node is off-centered there. See this beautiful cockpit here uh, in high speed? <laughs> we'll, get, we'll see more on that later, but I'm just trying to show you that I do have to get this thing up to speed. And you can see it's starting to fall back towards the ground. And I'm desperately trying to get up to speed before... Before... Uh, before this falls back in so that I can take control of it and continue the descent manually. There we go. So now, get on board this. I've dragged all the parachutes into a stage so I can deploy them. I found out that after repacking the parachutes, I've bound those to the action group four and they didn't work. So I ended up having to drag all the parachutes into their own stage to deploy them. It seems it's a bit of glitching between action groups and stages. Again, it's just one of those things. It's a you know alpha game. I'm sure we'll get it fixed. Uh, you can work around it, but uh, it can be kind of hairy when you're falling towards the ground and you realize your parachutes aren't deploying. So yeah, accelerating. I'm using the RCS just a little there to try and get myself in towards the closer to the Car Kerbal Space Center. And yeah, a lot of oscillation there, which would make the occupants sick. Thankfully, this is a space probe driven spacecraft. There is no occupants on board to get seasick. Looks like all the parachutes have deployed. Uh, gear comes out, we come down, we get full deployment at 500 meters and we're 5.6 kilometers away from our airship. And we're gonna get down nicely, but it will mean that our airship's gonna have to travel, you know, five odd kilometers to get to us and so that's another stage successfully recovered now let us go to our our uh, facility in orbit and uh and let's follow this thing so we we rendezvoused you know you didn't need to see all that that's kind of boring and uh we're just gonna dock this so uh you can appreciate how this thing moves now this Space Station has been moving progressively further and further off axis. So I have to manually turn it, you know, using external reference points to try and figure out where it is. And uh, you can see this is rather wide. So I've, I've picked, I originally picked that docking port there that's nearest to me. But as I get in, I realize that I can't do that. And so now, yeah, we get to see this marvelous cockpit. So B9 Industries, uh, B9 Aerospace. This is by far my favorite interior of any cockpit that's been built by anyone. Uh, but then again, I haven't seen all of them. I'm sure there's someone out there who's going to tell me, oh, you got to see the IVA view and such and such. No, this is my favorite one for now. Again, it looks like a space truck. It has windows in the floor as well, which is kind of cool. It has all the instrumentation. It has all the, all the lights nicely visible. I mean, everything that I need. But I'm just going to come in here and, uh, well, I'm going to try and dock manually through the through the glass. Of course, at this point, I hadn't realized that uh, this was a bad location. If I keep going in this way, I, th I think there would be a good chance that I end up colliding with the spacecraft that's parked on the central node. But uh, until I change course, <laughs> I, could, I guess I could have just rolled out of this situation. But uh, instead, I, I mess things up. Oh well, never mind. Uh, it's nicely balanced. I had to fit the RCS in groups. Yeah, there I am. I'm kind of going over the top now as I realize that I need to be orthogonal or I need to be at angles to my the other spacecraft so I don't bump into it. But I've set the target and uh, yeah, we can just sit and enjoy a nice little uh, flight from inside the cockpit here. This is double time, so you know, you won't be able to hear. There's no engines fired, it's all RCS, but uh, obviously this is faster, higher frame rate than you would see with uh, with the game right now. I, I have yet to actually install this version on 18.4. Uh, I've been concerned about the number of plugins I have. So, And I, was, I, I actually recorded this before 18.4 was officially released. While I've had access to 18.4... Um, as a tester, I haven't, you know, I don't want to record any videos with them until it's officially released because that means I can't release videos. So that's why. Anyway, because you get this nice view, I can kind of aim 
manually and get on this. I set I set the control you know control from here to be the docking port, but you see that it still ends up off center. I'm not sure if that is something that's you know gonna get fixed or what, but people keep telling me, oh you gotta use the you gotta use the control from here thing. No, that doesn't always work. Instead, I'm just going to eyeball it and guess where things go, and there we go! Nice! You can see things shaking around. I'm not sure uh, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. It looks like the cockpit's shaking inside there, but look! We are docked on the station. And uh, that will ultimately be my space tug. Uh, it's going to be like a space train. It's going to tow several payloads behind it. Yeah, it'll be able to do full moon or transfers. Anyway, we're uh, refueling this Keithane Miner. We launched the Keithane Miner last week. Uh, not last week, but, God, it seems like a week ago. Earlier in the week. And it's time to take this out to the moon so that we can start mining that sweet, sweet Keithane. You can see we have a, a fuel tank there, which will be attached to the space station to store the transferred goods. We have a, a refining unit there, a converter. It's a small converter, but we're going to try and carry that down to the surface so we can refuel. And we have a fuel... well, we have a couple of uh, rockets, a couple of nuclear rockets on the side. With the... the um, I don't know, what do you call them? The 400 fuel tanks? I think they're the FLT 400 fuel tanks. Anyway, you know, long story short, we head out to the moon with great speed. And the moon is actually pretty busy out that way. Well, we're going to turn this thing around and get a nice look at the space station. Where is it? Go on, show yourself, Olympus. My, how wonderful you look. Being constructed over many, many moons by um, many dedicated Kermans. Yeah, it looks, looks kind of nice from this distance. Anyway, we're, we're just basically going to go full speed to the moon and... Uh, trying to burn all our fuel up. This is going to be very, very fast because honestly, you don't want to see this whole thing. Um, we get to Artemis, which is, as I said, the hunter goddess, we've said. Her brother is Apollo, apparently. That's what it is. And unfortunately, the station around the moon is a little congested and there's no real place for me to park all this stuff at once. So I have to actually take the little lander spacecraft and unplug it temporarily. Meanwhile, we try to rotate this and drop it on the bottom. So I think one of the things we're gonna ha definitely have in future launches is we're gonna need a docking adapter so we can have more things attached to the station. And yeah, a little bit of work here to get this thing docked. It's not perfectly balanced, but there we go. And now we gotta bring this thing back and that'll take a bit of work. Yeah, yeah. this thing also wants to turn around and it wants to attach the Kathane converter unit to that, uh, to the top of it because we're gonna land on the surface with the converter unit on the top of it. There we go. Drop that in. So that way it'll be able to descend to the surface and do its thing. And at this point, I actually dis detached it thinking, I would take it down and, and start my harvesting as soon as possible. Meanwhile, we're bringing this thing around and I'm docking on here, on the on behind the fuel tank. That's all nice and good. And then I start to go and say, okay, now to land this thing. Where were you landing? Where is the space? Oh, it's night time and the Keithane conversion process and mining process takes a lot of power, so we have large solar panels on it. So a decision was taken to not actually land at this point. So in that case, I just continue to reorganize the station. One of the things we do want to do is put this little, um, what do you call it, little, uh, I don't know, space cabin on the surface. So we, uh, deta we, we detach the the moon bus and instead we put on the the lander so that will carry it down. We redock our Keithane unit so that they can wait in orbit at Hotel Artemis while waiting for the daylight and uh, this continues heads homewards so that uh, 
it can pick up another bunch of crew. We're going to need more people, I think, in this operation because it is growing every day. I believe that soon the Artemis station will be at least as popular as Olympus. In fact, right now I think there's more people on the moon than there are in low carbon orbit since there's only three people in low carbon orbit. And uh, the moon and moon orbit has more people. Of course, that's discounting the large population of Kerbals that live there. Oh, hi, look, there's a space center there. And so that's us coming home for another pickup, the space bus paying a visit and moving around very quickly. I guess we'll hook it on the, the, the back side of the docking ring this time. We're going to need to think off some other things. So we're going to need, for sure, a docking ring. We're going to need some ways to move that fuel around. So that's what the, the tug is all about. And, uh, well, we're going to need to wait for daylight on the moon, aren't we? And that will be in the next episode, I guess. So everything's fine. Everyone's back home. We're going to make some more deliveries to the space station. Until then, though, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.